Hey guys, the Armory Engine 0.5 is out and in this tutorial I will show you the Endless Runner example project. You can download the latest version from this page, click on download, then download now. And if you like you can support the author with an amount of your choice. Or you can go directly to the downloads, I'm using the version for Blender 2.7. And on this GitHub page, the link is also added to the description below, you can download some example projects and one of these is the Endless Runner game that I will explain in this tutorial. Ok, so let's get started with a new project, I opened Blender 2.7 that is included in the Armory download and these are the example projects that we got from the GitHub page and I'm opening this game Endless Run. The first model that you can see is the player with a run cycle. This is just a simple skeletal animation. But before we go more into detail, I start the game. I press the play button. Then the game is compiled and started. And this is how it looks like. A very simple endless runner, you have to collect these gems. And the number of gems you collected is displayed in the upper left hand corner. It's a bit too slow for my taste, but perhaps we can change this later on. Ok, so let's dissect this a bit, first I go to the scene tab and here you can see the traits for the scene, this is a canvas and a script. First of all let's open the canvas, I click on edit canvas and here you can see the UI editor with just one control or widget, this is the score, a text field that is used to display the number of collected gems. A very simple UI but it's good for demonstration. Alright, so I close this for now and remember the name score of the text because we are going to access this from a script. The next thing that I want to show you is the hidden objects, for example the tiles that are on the second layer. We have two of them, tile 0 and tile 1. The walls of the first one are a bit higher, just to bring in some variation when these tiles are generated. And on this layer here we have the gem object. Ok, so let's dive into the scripts. I have the gem selected and then I go to the object tab and here's a script that is called gem. It is a hex script and I can open it by clicking edit script which opens the script in the included editor. So let's go through the code, it's not that hard to understand. There's a notify on update method that is called on every frame and there we are going to rotate the gem around the set axis. Then the player object from the active scene is retrieved and the distance between the gem, which is the current transform and this player is calculated and if it is lower than 0.6, just a magic number here that seems to work, the gem is deleted, the number of collected gems is increased and the new number is written as text into the score text element. You remember? The text field of the canvas, we get it here as trade and then the number of collected gems is assigned to the text property. Alright, now let's have a look at the player move logic. I select the player on the first layer. It is a child of an empty object, but I select the player. And the player has the hex script player controller assigned that I open now. It also implements the notify on update method and here we get the keyboard and the current X location of the player. And then it's checked if left key or A key is pressed down, in this case we are moving to the left, and if the right arrow key or D is pressed, the player is moved to the right. Also very simple. The last one is the scene builder script. This is an armory trait that you can find here on the scene tab, and it handles the dynamic creation of the tiles. There's one central method that is called spawn tile in which the tiles are created by using the method spawn object. The tiles are created randomly and to do this a number between 0 and 1 is created by using the random method with a maximum of 2 and with this logic either tile 0 or tile 1 is created. Ok, then the modulo operator is used to always remove the tile that is not visible and then it will be replaced in the tiles array by the tile that we just created. After that a gem is spawned, but also randomly. This means if this random method returns 0 then the gem is spawned and also at a random x location. In the notify on update method we get the empty object, which is the parent of the player and this is moved forward along the y axis. 
If more tiles are needed, the method spawn tile is called. So that's basically it, but let's extend this a bit. For example, the speed can be increased. So I'll replace 0.1 with 0.3 and I will also add a third tile. To do this, I set the parameter of the random function to 3 and now tiles with the names tile 0, tile 1 or tile 2 can be created. But of course we will need a tile that is named tile 2, so I will duplicate this one here by pressing Shift and D. And then I add a simple variation to this. This will also have a strange effect on the UV map when I add in here some new edge loops. But I think for the sake of this tutorial, this is acceptable. Now go back to the first layer and press F5 to start again. And this is a speed that I like more. And also the new tile that we created with the strange UVs has a quite interesting effect in my opinion. So guys, I hope you liked this new tutorial about the Armory engine for Armory 0.5. If you have any questions, add these to the comments below and I try to answer them. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and think about being my patron, this would really help this channel grow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on JNM.